Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I am bringing a video to you on laparoscopic hysterectomy. It's a straightforward case which has a left-sided tubo ovarian mass with a hydrosalpings. Let's see how we proceed with today's case. In case you are new to the channel, I welcome you. Kindly like and subscribe to most of my videos even if you don't like them. It helps me quite a lot and motivates me to create new content. Most of the videos are about laparoscopic surgeries and a few videos are about ART that is assisted reproductive techniques. So on the screen of today's case you are seeing that we are we are starting with the left side of the uterus. Uh, the adnexal dissection over here is a little bit tricky because of the uh, tubo ovarian mass. Now you see that we are coagulating the tubo ovarian ligament. Here it is very difficult to exactly make out where is the tube and where is the ovarian ligament. However, we are trying our best to find out exactly what is where. So the first uh, coagulation and cutting session, it was of the fallopian tube. And once we have uh, cut and coagulated, coagulated and cut this ligament, we have opened the area up and this helps us in delineating the left sided ovarian ligament there. So in our left hand we are having a bipolar forceps which is a standard bipolar forceps. Now we are holding the left sided ovarian ligament with it and we have begun the coagulation. The current settings are mostly kept on the lower end that is done so that we cook the tissue slowly and that gives us a deep coagulation. The tissue is coagulated slowly and we can see that the bubbles are coming from the tissue which indicates that it is a vascular structure. We have to coagulate it slowly till the bubbles subside and we have no, few, no further bubbles coming. So now that we have coagulated we are now going to cut with the instrument on the right hand side which is called the laparoscopic shearer. This instrument uses bipolar energy and uh, it has the ability to coagulate as well as cut. This instrument is better at cutting than coagulating. However, we use the combination of a standard bipolar forceps with the low current along with uh, the bipolar shearer which is mostly at a high current setting to do our dissection throughout the case. Now we are finishing with the deeper part of the fallopian tube. Mostly a vein is found in this area and it's notorious for causing some bleeding. Since both the instruments have the ability to coagulate, it comes in very handy. Now we are coagulating the left sided round ligament. Now we are putting a stretch on the uterus so that the round ligament presents to us in a better way. We are coagulating it with our standard bipolar forceps. Again the trick is the same. We give a slow coagulation burst followed by cutting with the laparoscopic shearer. The final bit of coagulation is done by the laparoscopic shearer before we cut but as you can see that the coagulation is almost complete and no further bubbles are coming from this area. We always try our best to leave a small stump on the uterine aspect which protects us from backflow bleeding. You can see that the laparoscopic shearer causes a beautiful dissection to happen and it's fairly quick in doing its work. Here we are opening the anterior leaf of the broad ligament which would help us to complete the cutting of the broad ligament of the round ligament. Cool. 
the uterus is a normal size to bulky uterus not very large and it's a fairly easy case that I can show you you're getting the adnexal mass to the side which helps us in better visualization of the structures small flimsy additions that we are finding there which can be easily dealt with just by blunt traction laparoscopic hysterectomy uh, I believe has come of age presently and it has become one of the gold standard techniques to perform hysterectomy worldwide it has several advantages that are there for the patient as well as the surgeon for the patient uh, the laparoscopic hysterectomy gives us minimum trauma to the collateral structures that is minimum collateral damage which causes way lesser pain way lesser bleeding to the surgeon it gives us the opportunity to view the structures under magnification and to have very precise dissection of the different tissues on the screen you can see that the posterior leaf of the broad ligament has been dissected out and now we are proceeding anteriorly the dissection and the cutting of the posterior leaf of peritoneum helps the ureter to be lateralized on its own naturally now we are proceeding with the dissection of the anterior leaf of broad ligament and the building of the uterovesical fold of peritoneum this area requires an anterior u-cut as you can see the bipolar forceps helps in uh, creating the tissue plane and the other forceps that is the bipolar shearer helps in cutting you, as you can see this is a case of previous LSES and there is a very minor small scar of the previous LSES we can see that the CO2 insufflation goes into the tissue planes which further helps in mobilizing the bladder beautifully as we proceed from left to right we can see that the bladder is mobilized downwards beautifully the trick of the dissection is to give traction with one hand and help in pushing with the other any adhesions that may be encountered sometimes require to be released with the help of cutting current this procedure may as well be done with a bipolar bipolar and scissor combination or with a harmonic scalpel or any other ultrasound based instruments however this instrument as you can see on the screen does the job quite well another thing to remember over here is that the yellow color fat that you see it belongs to the bladder and always should be above your instruments as you pull the bladder up with one hand and push the remaining stuff downwards more and more tissue planes open up sometimes minor adhesions which may be seen due to LACS or any other reason may require to be cut as mentioned below before the case was previously operated uh, for an unknown reason on the right side where the fallopian tube seems to have been removed 
However, due to absence of any discharge card and lack of history from the patient's side because she doesn't remember why it was removed, uh, maybe there are more number of additions on this side. Here we see that the round ligament and the ovarian ligament has uh, puckered a bit and the shortening of these ligaments. We can also see the absence of the fallopian tube on this end. Also the scarring has been there, it was an open surgery. However, with the use of our laparoscopic shearer, we can give a quick burst of coagulation followed by cutting. As you can see, there is hardly any ligament to hold. However, since these instruments are very thin, they do an amazing job. On our YouTube channel, there are various videos of laparoscopic hysterectomy being done for various cases, for various in, uh, indications. Please uh, go through all of them so that uh, you can understand how this process is done for various indications and what are the different challenges that the surgeon may face mm -hmm. during the process. The aim of our channel is to educate uh, young surgeons as well as uh, patients who would be undergoing this procedure about the safety aspect of this procedure and the tips and tricks that can be done to achieve a very good result in the patient. You can see a small vessel is being treated with the bipolar forceps. Since the ligament is very short, the vessel has retracted inwards. However, it can be very easily treated using bipolar energy. We typically use a baseball diamond configuration in which we are using 5 mm ports, 3 in number and the optical port is the 10 mm port. Now you can see that we have begun with the dissection of the posterior leaf of the broad ligament. We are removing some of the connective tissue here and there to get a better exposure of the uterine vessels. This process is called skeletonization of the uterine vessels where the uterine artery which is more anteriorly and the uterine vein which is located more posteriorly is made devoid of any connective tissue in front and at the back. This helps us to get a better grip on the structures and to better coagulate them and helps also in cutting. Also. In case there is some untoward bleeding or some uh, accident that occurs, then it is way easier to deal with the problems. Here you find that this, this process is a little bit uh, more prolonged because uh, there is a little bit more scar tissue due to the previous surgery. Now we are just changing the position of the uterus and we are antiverting it means we are exposing the rear of the uterus. We just have to connect the right and the left side. So we just have to connect the dots. While doing that we can even cut the ligaments. These ligaments are called the uterosacral ligaments which are the strongest ligaments holding the uterus in its place. The entire idea of performing a hysterectomy, may it be laparoscopic, vaginal or an abdominal, is to get rid of all the connections of the uterus, all the connective ligaments of the uterus that hold it in place. While doing that, we also have to block and cut the uterine blood supply and the venous drainage. While doing this entire step, we have to be careful not to damage the bladder in front 
or the rectum or the bowel at the back. <clears throat> so now we are getting rid of some of the connective tissue on the left hand side and exposing the uterine vessels. We always uh, devote some time to this skeletonization process and the bladder pillar dissection which exposes the uterine vessels completely. When uh, almost 3 to 4 cm length of uterine vessels is available for coagulation, that's when we begin the coagulation process. This part of the dissection is called the bladder pillar dissection. It always contains certain venous structures and uh, little bit bleeding while pulling on that structure is common. Most of the patients of laparoscopic hysterectomy do not require bladder catheterization. They do not require a prolonged hospital stay and can be discharged very well between uh, 24 to 48 hours after the case. Most of them walk in, in the ward or the hospital on the, on the first post-operative day. They walk to the bathroom within uh, 4 to 5 hours of performing the procedure. and they are mostly pain free on the first day itself. As far as the wound is concerned, the patient is left with three small wounds which are sutured with a very fine thread which has an excellent cosmetic outcome. The patient can have bath within 24 to 48 hours as long as she is using a waterproof uh, tape or a bandage to cover the wounds. After around 7 to 10 days of the surgery, we cut the sutures in case non-absorbable sutures have been used or staplers have been used to uh, get uh, to take care of the wound. Here you can see that the uterine vessels have been coagulated and using the laparoscopic shearer we, end, we are doing the cutting part of it. As mentioned before the bipolar forceps on the right hand side or sorry on the left hand side is on a low current setting that helps in slow cooking of the tissues but a deeper coagulation whereas the laparoscopic shearer is used like a scissor it has more of a cutting function however it also has the ability to coagulate the laparoscopic shearer typically has a high current setting and normally is used in bursts <coughs> Once the uterine artery and the uh, vein bundle has been coagulated well and cut off, we try to lateralize it and move parallel to the cervix. And at the end of the surgery, at the end of the step, you will realize that we have lateralized the entire bundle.
now we are showing you the same step on the opposite side we are using the laparoscopic shearer to give a quick burst of coagulation current since the laparoscopic shearer is at a higher power setting it's always the coagulation is given in bursts however it can also get the job done equally well Now that you can see that the bubbles have stopped coming, it is time to cut the uterine artery bundle. The uterine vessels are mostly cut at the same level as the UV fold of peritoneum. the dissection always moves parallel and downwards from the cervix along the cervix <coughs> any bleeding that can occur can always be easily coagulated as you can see on the screen the bleeding that you can see is the backflow bleeding nothing requires to be done however in case you don't want the field to be spoiled with the backflow blood you can always give it a quick coagulation for all practical purposes the hysterectomy is almost done now all the that needs to be done is colpotomy that is opening of the vaginal vault we are doing the final touches of uh, excising the of cutting the uterosacral ligaments the uterosacral ligaments are the most important structure that, uh, that supports the uterus one important step that we do in uh, laparoscopic hysterectomy is that we do not remove the attachment of the vaginal vault with the uterosacral ligaments completely only the upper portion is cut whereas the majority of the ligament is still kept attached to the uterine vault to the uh, vaginal vault and this helps in preventing any vault prolapse in the future now on your screen you can see that we are giving a cut which is cutting the cervical vaginal fascia this helps in uh, further downward mobilization of the bladder and also this very step will give us a lot of help while suturing the vaginal vault
here you can see that we have introduced a swab on a sponge holder to delineate the phonics better so that maximum length of the vagina can be preserved the swab on the need on the sponge holder is only important to cause the colpotomy once the colpotomy is done we have a very good idea about the length of the vagina and we can follow the same length throughout you will now notice that the laparoscopic shearer is one of the best instruments to do colpotomy very quickly and effectively since the same instrument has the ability to coagulate as well as cut it can help us in uh, sealing the small uh, oozers that may come up from the vaginal wall maintaining a good pneumoperitoneum at this stage is sometimes a challenge we always use a mop at the introitus or an obturator to prevent the leakage of CO2 gas. Here you can see that uh, a small bleeder has opened up and can be easily dealt with and treated using the laparoscopic shearer. You can very easily notice that there is no length of vagina that has been left on the uterine side and no length of the vagina is wasted and maximum length is preserved. This very fact is very difficult to achieve when we are doing an open hysterectomy. Once the colpotomy is almost done and the uterus is liberated, we usually use a valsalum or a tinaculum which is put through the vagina to hold the cervix and then enter, then pull the uterus out. At the end of the case, we are removing the adnexal mass. Now this is the coagulation and cutting of the infundibulopelvic ligament.
at the end of the procedure the vaginal vault is sutured using 2-0 bicryl on a cutting needle using running suture from right to left we use a combination of needle holders on either sides I hope you have liked the video so far and thanks for watching till here. If you have not yet liked the video, kindly like it. In case you have any comments or want to know something specific about the video or the surgery or this technique, uh, kindly let me know in the comment section below. Do remember to subscribe to the channel for more such videos and any specific topic in case you want me to discuss kindly let me know in the comment section below In this particular case, we have closed the vaginal vault using three interrupted figure of eight sutures. At the end of the case, we give a wash with warm saline and we look for any uh, bleeding or oozing that may be occurring. It is always important that the needle is removed out under vision which prevents any complications.